field engineering? Well, it's awesome is what it is. Field engineers or the position of field engineering is crucial to the construction industry and to the development of future positions. It's absolutely amazing. It's kind of a forgotten or lost art. And I want you to know about it and be able to leverage it in your organization. So let's find out together in this video, what is a field engineer? What do they do? Why should every company have them? And what will you get if you do? So let's cover that now. Okay, so I grew up with Hensel Phelps. I was taught to be a builder by Hensel Phelps. I love that company. I love all your companies. If you're like, why does Jay Money talk about HP? Hey, I grew up there. I'm just letting you know. And so uh, Professor Crawford at Purdue University did sabbaticals with Hensel Phelps and wrote a book called the Field Engineering Methods Manual, or its other name is Construction Surveying and Layout, version number three. There will be a version number four coming out, but that book clearly explains the role of field engineers. And I know there are lots of massive companies that have that role. And I will tell you, I don't think that I'm just biased and brainwashed because I grew up at HP in thinking that I that field engineers are amazing. Like it is an amazing, amazing role. A field engineer is an entry-level position where they do frontline construction surveying and layout, frontline safety and quality. They create lift drawings to help identify problems, learn the plans, and really streamline the construction in the field. And they monitor the quality installation of components in the field. It is an amazing, amazing position. So when you think about field engineering, this is the bridge between what should be done and what gets done with the craft. They support the craft and they are crucial in those field implementation roles. The other thing is field engineers become the best superintendents. We did a study, and yes, it was a study, where we took a company, and this was a $1.5 billion a year company, and we analyzed their positions of superintendents. And we saw that there was a curve, and most of the supers got stuck at position level one and two, and there was five levels of superintendent. And we asked why. We did a survey with the supers themselves, their supervisors, and we found out that they were missing key skills. And all of those key skills, whether it was technology, using a to-do list, personal organization, whether it was delegating, speaking up, holding people accountable, having builder knowledge, being able to visualize things in 3D, all of it stemmed from a lack of experience in the field engineering roles. The other thing, that I get asked a lot is, hey, Jason, how do we not just take college graduates into the role of superintendent, but what about surveyors, foremen, and you know other industry professionals? And I have observed over and over and over that the best superintendents are made from those ranks, but always, in my opinion, through the role of field engineer. Whether it's college graduate, surveyor, uh, foreman, uh, worker, uh, industry hire, whatever, without negative consequences, take an industry professional and throw them in as a superintendent without consequences if they skip the role of field engineering in between because you miss that builder role. The superintendent role is not a builder role. You need to be a builder to do it well, but it is a planning and organization role. It is a leadership role. It is not a builder role. The position of foreman and field engineer and worker, but from an overall perspective, field engineer is the only overall builder role. Now, if you're like, well, hold on a minute, Jason, what about blah, blah, blah. A surveyor has specific surveying builder experience. A foreman has crew specific uh, builder experience. A worker has worker specific uh, builder experience. But a field engineer gets a, a broad range of experience in a builder role supporting all of those crews in for multiple crews, multiple phases on a project. It is the only true builder role that I know of. And so if I need to be a builder as a superintendent, I want experience being a builder. I want experience building, being a field engineer. Now, let me dispel a common misconception. Jason, we don't do self-perform. Hey, I don't care. When I was at Hensel Phelps, I did self-perform concrete. I was a field engineer for the Masons. I was a field engineer for the framing and drywall folks, 
for the overhead MEP folks, for the finished contractors, commissioning scopes, everyone. Every scope needs the interface of a field engineer, not just self-perform. So if you say, well, I don't have self-perform, I don't need field engineers. Yes, you do. You need field engineers. You still need survey. You still need checks. You still need interface. You still need answers to RFIs. You still need help quality controlling every aspect of the work. And you still need to create builders for the future. Everyone needs field engineers. I just, I love you. Let me give you a heart. I still don't know that you're listening to me. You're here in this video and you're like, yeah, 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 I got it, I got it. No, we need a field engineering program in your company. I do super PM boot camps all the time and we've got it down pat. They're amazing. But the only way we're gonna change this industry is if we start field engineer boot camps every company now because we must train people at a fundamental level. If we do not, the superintendents will become more like Walmart security guards. They will run around not knowing how to build. They will not know how to plan and schedule. They will not know construction at a fundamental level. They will not know how to QC work. They will not know how to manage layout. They will not be able to visualize things in 3D. They will not know the fundamentals of safety and quality. They will not be able to understand coordinate geometry systems. They will not understand technology. They will not know how to think and plan. They will not know how to organize. They will not keep a to-do list and a personal organization system. They will not speak up. They will not properly know how to interface with the craft and they will be missing so many skills that now we've we've damaged their career and their success and our results and so every company needs a field engineering program and so this is hugely important we get this wrong so much right uh, why do we have field engineers i don't need field engineers because i don't do self-perform we don't have field engineers simply because we want to lay stuff out we have field engineers to uh, essentially create the next generation of builders, right? It would be like saying, yeah, we don't need medical schools because we don't need like official tests. We don't need to do surgeries on cadavers. There's no use for that. So let's get rid of medical schools. What? Like the purpose was never to do surgeries on cadavers. The purpose was to train the next a generation of doctors and surgeons, right? So when we say I don't need field engineers because we don't do layout and lift drawings, like I don't care. We do layout and lift drawings to train the next level of builders. So layout specifically brainwashes you or programs your mind to see things in 3D and in a coordinate geometry system. Lift drawings forces you to learn how to read drawings and to visualize the drawings in 3D. Quality and safety frontline management forces you to think in those paradigms, right? And it forces you to learn technology, forces you to be organized, forces you to respect the craft. And you can't get it any other way in my observation. So it's absolutely crucial. If you do have field engineers, in three to four years, and if you do field engineer boot camps with us or make your own, and actually we can help you make your own, if you have field engineers, you will be able to eventually stop having to hire from the industry and you will make your own superintendents, the Navy SEALs of field leaders in your company. And you'll be able to transition foremen, workers, surveyors, BIM professionals, college graduates and anyone into that builder role with the right perspective. Let me go back to the study that we did. When we looked at that same cross section of people, we also found that they would be delayed in those roles for a long period of time. And then we, we took a, a sampling from the general superintendents, field directors, and the project directors in the company were like, what was different about them? And the people that got stuck, it was school, to supervision or foreman to superintendent. They skipped that role. But when we went and analyzed the G, uh, general superintendents, the GSs, the field directors, these highly successful people, we found that it was entry level, field engineering or survey, time in the field, then engineering, then superintending, then on, and they accelerated and got to where they were going anywhere from 12 to 18 years. Now that has shortened now with our current economy, but these other folks were in the position 18, 20, 25, 30 years stuck at superintendent level two. So don't uh, act like the cheetah, act like the gazelle. The cheetah can run for about four to five seconds, really fast, like 65 miles per hour, but then tires out. But the gazelle can run at a consistent pace consistently. People that go from college to superintendent, foreman to superintendent, surveyor to superintendent, are acting like the cheetah, 
They go fast for four or five seconds, but then they get stuck and exhausted. Don't do that. Act like the gazelle. Have a consistent pace. Spend that time in the field engineering ranks and set up your career because it will come back to you on the back end. And so your company can be amazing. You can have real builders in the field. They can have all the tools that they need to run remarkable projects. You can have field engineer boot camps and a culture and a tradition that's like just as impactful and loyal as like the Marines or the Navy SEALs or other social groups that like know their culture, know who they are, and they have traditions. You can have field engineer boot camps that are like the best experience for the entire company every year, where each of your leaders every year deploy that training program for the up and coming generation. You can have better results, better quality, better, higher uh, profits on your projects. The question is, are you willing to sacrifice a little bit of energy in the short term for the long term gains? And instead of frantically hiring people uh, from the industry, which by the way, I don't, I haven't seen any contractor go out and hire a bunch of supers inside the US. I have seen it in Canada and other places and in Europe. But in the US, I'm not seeing any companies going out and poaching supers that know what you want them to know. You're not gonna go find a five-star superintendent by poaching them from another company. They're gonna stay at that company because that company's treating them right. You need to make your own. It's a long-term investment. It'll take three to five years, but it's 100% worth it. And so this is field engineering. I'm gonna link you to a video of our field engineering boot camps and the book, Construction Surveying and Layout, or properly titled, The Field Engineering Methods Manual. Please check it out. Review chapters one through eight and ask yourself, do your people need to know that? Because I'm telling you, they do. And if we don't get this fixed, we're gonna be an industry of brokers and not builders. It's time to get back to our roots, to what creates fundamental builders. It's time to bring back field engineering. On we go.